Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Praise God. We're talking about what it means to live as a new creation, how to live like who you really are. That's what we're, that's what we're trying to you know, get across to you, that as a new creation being, we don't live the way we lived before. Amen. The man that we are now is a different man. Uh, now, the world will, you know, uh, will try to get you to think that you're only a body, that, you know, that spiritual things aren't really real, that we're just matter, you know, we're physical matter, and, you know, and we, we, you know, of course, a lot of people think, you know, when you die, you die, that's it. And uh, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul addressed that. He said, if, if, this, if in this life only we have hope, we are among all men the most miserable because right. we're living a lie. If we're only, if, if, you know, if, if living by faith and getting things happening, you know, good, is only for this life, uh, and there is no wild life afterwards, we're, mis we're miserable. We're just living a lie. And uh, if, really, if, if there is no afterlife, if there's no uh, life beyond this physical realm, you need to go get you some heroin and get you some dope and get you some alcohol and go shoot up, smoke up, and drink up and party harder your way into the afterlife, baby, because if that's all there is, you may as well enjoy this one. But the truth of the matter is, man is not a body. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul. He lives in a body. You, the body without the spirit is dead. The body can't function without the spirit. So the truth of the matter is that we are spirit beings. Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, committed high treason, and became spiritually born again from life unto death. Satan became his spiritual father. Jesus acknowledged that in John's Gospel, the 8th chapter, I believe the 44th verse. He said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. Thus, for the sinner, it is natural to sin. When a born-again, when a person becomes a born-again believer, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Or one translation actually says this, a new species of being that never existed before. So you're no longer a sinner. You're a new creation. And as a matter of fact, the 21st verse says, you know, for he who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And of course, in verse 18 of this fifth chapter says this, and all things are of God. Well, we know our body didn't get changed over because we still look the same. I mean, you still weighed the same. When you got saved, you still weighed the same. If you had a bowl on your left cheek, you still had one. Hello? If you had a pimple, you still had the pimple. That's kind of gross, isn't it? Well, anyway, let's maybe come up with another analogy. Hallelujah. If you had a beard, you didn't, your beard didn't fall off when you got saved. Are you here? You're gone home. No, it's not your body that got born again. The, we're talking about spiritual things. Jesus said in John's gospel... The third chapter, when he came to Nicodemus, he said, except the man be born, or Nicodemus came to him, he said, except the man be born anew or born again or born from above, he should not see the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And Jesus said, are you a teacher or a master of Israel and don't know these things? <coughs> don't you understand spiritual things is what, is what there really is? God is a spirit. They knew that. God is a spirit. Not God, is not, God is not spirit. He is a spirit. He's not a spiritual force. He's not a cosmic cloud. He's not a just great big spiritual blob. He is a spirit. And he created man in his image and his likeness after his kind. He made man like him. What? Man is a spirit being. God formed the body of man out of the dust of the ground and it did nothing but sit there. Until God breathed into it. And it became a living soul, or I think the Hebrew actually says a speaking spirit. Amen. It wasn't until the spirit of God that God imparted it to that body, took of himself and put into that body, and it became a, a, a speaking spirit or a living soul. It became alive. That body could not live until spirit was put into it. When the spirit departs, it dies. It stops. It won't function. Amen. Now, they can hook you up to a bunch of machines and pump air into it and pump bl the blood and keep it circulating. But you know what? They, 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 there's no brain activity. Why? The spirit goes. Hello? Okay. So, man is a new creation. We're, we've been born again. 
And we've already talked about how that when we got born again from Romans the 6th and 8th chapters, we, we, you know, we, we kind of skip over 7 because that's Paul's uh, discussing his, his, his difficulty of dealing with that, that living in the spirit in the natural realm. But when we, we're, we're, and for the sake of this discussion, we just kind of skip over that. And we have covered that in depth uh, in our teaching on Romans. So, uh, but you know, in 6 and 8, we find out that we have been made dead to sin or we're no longer bound by the authority of the kingdom of darkness. We are no longer under the rule or the authority of sin. We don't have to obey it. The Bible even tells us that we don't have to obey the, the flesh and the lust of the flesh. We, can, we have control and we have authority over that. We're new creation beings. We've been made alive unto God. We are now to live as Adam was designed to live in the beginning, out of our spirit governing our body. Amen. Amen. You know, Paul writes and says once something very interesting in one place. He talks about, you know, he's talking about our freedom and liberty in Christ. And he comes along after he says all that and says this. Only use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. And there's a lot of people teaching grace right now that teach that your flesh can have, a, you can have an occasion for, the, for your flesh. I've heard it taught. I've heard, listen, I'm not just making it up. I've heard people teach it. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how you act. It doesn't matter. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to give. You don't have to obey. You don't have to submit. You, know, you can drink. You can shoot. It don't matter what you do. You can smoke dope. It don't matter because you're free in Christ Jesus. You're under grace. It doesn't matter. It has no effect on you. And yet Paul says this. He says, do not use your liberty in Christ Jesus as an occasion to satisfy what? The lust of the flesh. When we refer to the flesh, we're referring to the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the arenas that will bring you down and defeat you. So what are we to do? We're to live out of our spirit and walk after God. Did you know that the new man, the new created man, is designed to follow after God? And not be flesh driven, but Holy Ghost driven. Yeah. Actually, we, the, the, that's not even a proper term because the Holy Ghost leads, he doesn't drive. Right. We're led by the spirit. We're to follow after him, what? With a willing heart. I mean, the psalmist got so excited one day. He said, as, a, as, my, as um, my, um, uh, my soul longeth for thee, Jeremiah, and my flesh thirsteth for thee, as in a dry and thirsty land, amen? The psalmist said, as the deer panteth after the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Where is it in the church that people are longing to be in the presence of God instead of trying to figure out how they can get away with stuff? I say something is wrong with your walk with the Lord if you're trying to figure out about how much you can get away with instead of longing for him. Yeah. Amen. That's condemnation. No, there's a, there's a checkup. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a marker for you to check your life out. Well, there's nothing wrong with drinking. I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking. And you're going out trying to drink. All you're doing is getting a substitute for the Holy Ghost. Why don't you go spend three hours praying in tongues instead of taking your Chardonnay? Come on now. Well, it makes the food taste better. I had to kick that one to the curb. So now it's all about your taste and your flesh. Satisfying the lust of your flesh makes the, enhances the flavor of the food. You have food for nourishment. You don't have it so you can do like the world. We're not to be like the world. We're not of this world. We are not of this world. The scripture says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. You go through Proverbs, you'll find out a bunch of stuff. Wine is a mocker. Strong, there's a lot about drinking wine and strong. There's no covenant in the Old New Testament. Remember, Paul had to write to Timothy. I love this. Now, the Jews knew wine was a mocker. They knew the Proverbs. They knew the Psalms. They knew all the scriptures about it. They didn't have to talk about it. Now, you get over to a Gentile, in a Gentile church, you got Timothy coming along, and he's, he's got stomach issues, and Paul finally writes and says, drink a little wine. For thy stomach's sake, for thine altered infirmities. Drink no longer water, but a little you got, some, got some Christians taking that, uh, taking that to the excess. Boy, they got to have a little every time they eat. Right. And the world's watching you, folks. I said the world is watching. And I was in a region of the world that people believe in getting drunk. It was the culture. They drank wine all over the place. But Timothy wasn't drinking it. 
I wonder why Paul had to tell him to do it. Because he wasn't doing it. Our testimony is worth more than your taste buds at your meal with your fish. Amen. 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 And the danger that you, ministers, I'm telling you, you better shape up. I just heard somebody just said this the other day. Oh, actually, it wasn't Jamie was reading it to me. Charles Spurgeon said, what you do, I'm talking about ministers, in moderation allows the congregation to do in excess. So you pastors going around drinking your beer, looking cool with all your buddies and get all tatted up and get your earrings and get your beer out and go out with your church after church and drink your beer with all of them and all that junk. I got I was right here in, in our city. We had some, got, saw it on the Internet. Out, out after church service, drinking and talk, drinking beer and stuff. And what you're doing in moderation, your congregation is doing in excess. Because you're the leader. That went over big. We are new creation beings. We're to, we're to be imitators of God. We're to be living a holy life. Not just pastors. The pastor's supposed to do it, so the congregation will do it. Amen? Is anybody left? Did y'all get up and go home? All right. Praise the Lord. Water. Hallelujah. So what happens? As a new creation being, we are to become spiritually minded. We read about that. We're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We talked about that. So now we're to do, the, to do what? Find out. We, we, talked, we started into and didn't quite finish there. Where are we getting our information? Some magazine by somebody who's living on the edge is not where you get your information. We got all these magazines out there about Christians who are living on the edge. And it's getting people into the church. Let me just rephrase that. It's getting them into a building that's called a church. Because the church is, is the body. We are the church. I know we call our buildings a church, but in honesty, if our building is not full of people full of, who are the church, then it's just a building. And we're trying to get people in. And we're trying to come up with gimmicks to get them to come in the doors. Even got one pastor that said this. He said, I want as many homosexuals in my church as I can get. No, you don't. The gospel, I read this in, 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 a, in an article. That was really a good article. <clears throat> the gospel is for everybody. Yes. It's for the homosexual. It's for the adulterer. It's for the thief. It's for the robber. It's for the murderer. It's for the rapist. It's for the, the lowest thing you can think of in society. The gospel is for them. But the church is an exclusive community. The church is the gathering of the saints for the empowerment to be trained up to go out there and take that gospel to those people and bring them into the kingdom of God and transform them and make them disciples of Jesus Christ. Then they come into the church, into that exclusive community as a believer. And the reason our church is so impotent and have no power is we've opened the church up and made it just a gathering place for everybody. One church, one of the fastest growing congregations in America has on their website, we are not here to disciple people. If you're coming to be discipled, you're in the wrong place. I have a hard time with that when Jesus said, go make disciples out of all men. Yeah, but they got numbers. What does that mean? So do the Mormons. So do the Jehovah's Witnesses. You can go to any rock concert and have more than any, any, any church anywhere in the world show up for, for a concert. They just filled the Greensboro Coliseum up four days in a row for Garth Brooks. And I'm not saying Garth Brooks is bad. I'm just saying they filled it up four days in a row. Yeah. They initially started one concert, had so many people trying to get tickets, they opened up and kept adding days to that one event because there were so many people who wanted tickets. So numbers are not the identifying factor of success. Amen. Then what is? Obedience to the scriptures. Amen. Willingness and obedience. Because Isaiah 119 says if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Right. We're to make people disciples. So the church is an exclusive club. 
It is the gathering of the believers for the perfecting of the saints so that they can go out and do the work of the ministry. And what is that? To take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the homosexual, to the adulterer, to the murderer, to the rapist, to the drug addict, to the drug dealer, to anybody out there. We're to take that gospel to them. And it's free. The gift of salvation is free to everybody. But our churches are to be a place that we live a life above board. That we live out of our spirit. Why? So that we are equipped when we go into that world with the anointing of God, with the power of God, with the Holy Ghost fragrance on our life so that we come in contact with the hurting, when we come in contact with the main, when we come in contact with the destitute, when we come in contact with the down and out, we may not even have the money to fix what they got, but we can look at them and say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Peter and John came to the gate called Beautiful. And there was that man, impotent, in his feet from his mother's womb. And, and, and he, they looked on him. And he looked back expecting to receive something. Them. They said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. And he came walking, leaping, and praising God into the temple. Now, I'll tell you what. He was probably more happy about walking than he would have been by a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Why? Wow. He, he can go out and make a living. He don't have to sit there and beg anymore. Yeah. He's now got his legs, praise God. But they, you know, that's what they said. Such as I have, give I thee. See, he had something to give. You go back and study throughout the book of Acts. Whenever they got persecuted, whenever things got tough, they ran to their own company and began to seek God and began to pray. And the power of God would fall. And they get filled with the Holy Ghost all over again. And then they say, now stretch forth your hands to heal in the name of thy holy child Jesus. And they ran back out there and went after him again. Amen. Amen. So the church isn't the cute club of drinking and showing everybody you can drink beer. Right. It's not the cute club of, you know, having all the sinners come in and tell them that they can serve in the nursery. Oh, it's not the cute club where we let everything come into the church, you know, and it's all inside the church, and we're just going to, you know, one, one, one guy who claims to be a pastor, I'm sorry. Homosexual couples come up to him and ask him, what do you think about our lifestyle? He says, I'm not the judge. You may not be, but blessed be God, this is. And if you don't change and you don't repent and you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. Amen. How dare you not tell them the truth? I'm not the judge. You're being judgmental. I'm not being judgmental. When I tell you what the word says, I'm not being judgmental. God's word is being the judge. I don't know how I got off over there, but praise God, it's good anyhow. We have got to get back to living a life out of, that's how I got there. Can y'all turn the air conditioner on? Good gracious sakes. I said, is anybody getting warmed up in here? Hallelujah. <coughs> We think, we're, we think we're going to win people by being cool. You're not, your coolness does not destroy the yoke. Amen. Your coolness does not break the burden. Amen. Jesus didn't say go into all the world and show everybody how cool you can be. He said go preach the gospel. Well, that's not, gospel is good news. Yeah, the gospel is good news. The good news is you're lost, you're without God, you're without hope, you're going to hell. But if you'll repent and believe on Jesus Christ, you'll, you don't have to do any of those things. You can have hope. You can have God. You don't have to go to hell. The good news is not God loves you no matter what you do. Jesus said, go preach, repent. Some guy got up recently in the past few years and said, 1 John 1, 9 doesn't even belong to the church. I said, isn't that amazing? Jesus appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos and spoke of seven different churches. And guess what he said to every one of the churches? Repent. Now, if the head of the church is telling the church to repent, I don't care what cute boy with skinny jeans on says. Hello. With bed head. Be that down to the belly button. Oh, that's really, that's disgusting. I don't care what people say. If the head of the church appears to John in the Isle of Patmos and starts start talking about all the seven churches in Asia Minor, and each one of them he comes along and says, I have someone against you, repent. I have this, repent. Stop doing that, repent. Repent, repent. 
then I guess if the head of the church says that the church needs to repent, then the church has to repent when the church is not doing right. Amen. I'll take the head of the church over skinny jeans guy. Any day. It's not about how cool we are. And see, I don't believe that Jesus appeared or talked to anybody and told them that we're not supposed to repent when he told us to repent. See, when we're not living right, we're not living out of our spirit and start giving into our flesh. We're not living right. We've got to repent and get right and start what? Living out of our spirit. You're supposed to live out of your spirit. Well, how do I live out of my spirit? Get your information in the right place. Amen. That's how I got off on all that. You don't need some quarterly or some magazine. Get to the Bible. Amen. See what the Bible says about how you're supposed to live and where you're supposed to live from. Remember, Romans says we're to live in newness of life. We're in a one, I think Wayman says, or a weast, I can't remember which one. It says we're to live in a whole new plane altogether. Then stop trying to live like you did before you got saved. I preached in January, Egypt just ain't all that. One guy put on his Facebook post recently, a good minister that, that I'm friends with. He said this, Lord, deliver us from whiners. He wasn't talking about W-I-N-E-R. He's talking about W-H-I-N. E. Got all these whiners in the body of Christ. Talking about how good it was before they got saved. How tough it is since they got saved. You don't be drinking out of them waters, do you? You don't have to have send Moses back up the mountain, do you? Hello? We gotta live out of our spirits. Our information has to come from the right place. Where are you supposed to get your information from? Well, number one, the your information has to come from the Word of God, not from somebody who's got an idea. We are so full of people who don't want to do the Word, who are looking from a, for a worldly technique to get something done that will appeal to people's flesh because people are flesh-driven, that they're, they're, they're sacrificing the anointing for a man method to get people to come. And then the people come and are seduced into believing that's what walking with God is all about. I can still be a sinner. I can still live like I did live. It doesn't matter. I can live just like I lived before and still go to heaven. Well, that's a deal. That's having your cake and eating it too. What you don't know is if you do it God's way, you get the cake, the frosting, and you get to eat it. And not gain weight. That's right. Get ready to go there. Great minds think alike. <coughs> Are you here? Going God's way. So we're going to get our information from the right place. Where, you know, where, where we get it? We get it from God's word. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Not what somebody else says. Amen. Well, I won't go to the church that drinks. Why? Just tell me why. Because I like the taste. Well, there are people who like to have sex. Does that mean they can just go out and fornicate? Come on now, I'm serious now. Yeah, you get, we start talking about sex, people just get all funny acting. He said that word in church. Sex, 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 sex. Does that mean because they like sex, they can go out and have sex anytime because it's pleasurable to them? No. We have got to learn that we are, we are spirit beings. We're to be led by the spirit. We're to live out of our spirit. We're to obey our spirits. Hallelujah. Make them subject to God. Be imitators of God as dear children. We're to be holy even as he is holy. And that means God's moral law and God's moral code we follow. Amen. I mean, why don't we just, I mean, if you're going to start the church of drinks, why don't we start the church that, that, that has free sex? The first fornicator church of Greensboro. I guarantee you, you would get people to come. Guarantee it. And they'd be telling everybody, man, I go to this cool church. We just, they just leave out all those scriptures about that. Because that's not what it really meant. Because, you know, God wants us to be happy. And us being happy is the most important thing to God. No, reconciling you to himself was the most important thing to God. Having you live according to his, his commands and his demands is the most important thing to God. Now understand this. If you will do the way God wants things done, you will be truly happy. 
Because there is no other place you can find the joy that comes from being in the presence and in harmony with God and his plan. Now, your flesh may not always be happy, but your spirit will be joyful. Amen? Amen? So this book of all shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe. That's the, the, the command of God. Now, just because we're in the New Testament doesn't mean God doesn't want us meditating in his word. And the reason he wants us to meditate in his word is so we can observe to what? Do. Do what? All that's written therein. What happens when you do all that's written therein? Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success, or deal wisely in the affairs of life. Notice, I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing... Did you know you can have bad success? Because yeah. God said if you do what his word says, you'll have good success. Right. You can have bad success. Yeah. Drug dealers shooting people every 30 minutes, blowing people up, killing off the competition, and all that stuff, and living in multi-million dollar houses down in Columbia is not good success. It might be success, but they're looking over their shoulder 24-7. Right. That's why they got guys walking around all the time with, with submachine guns and all this stuff, guarding and protecting them and radar scanners so they know if a jet's coming in so they can go down the bunker because it's not good success. It's bad success. But God says if you'll do it, his, see, see, we get this idea of, ha of having stuff, having things, ministers, having people, many people in the building is success. But did you sell out anything short to get there? Did you compromise teaching the full counsel of God's word so you wouldn't offend this group? So you could get a lot of numbers in there. So you can look successful. Now, I'm not saying every big church is that way, but you know, there's, I'm telling you folks, we, cannot, we can't sell anything short in order to have what the world's deemed successful. God said that if we keep the word of God in our mouth and meditate it day and night, day and night we'll have good success. Actually, not only meditating it, but doing it. So here's what, here's what happens to the believer. You start getting your information from the right place. <coughs> Did you know you can be deceived? You need to stop following men for the sake of getting what you want to hear. I'm going to start wearing sunglasses. Now that would call me Jim Jones then. All right, now I won't do that. You do not follow a teaching when it, if it goes astray. You have to be wise enough. You, and let, let, say, let me say this. The traveling minister, the television minister, I, there's a lot of those guys that have been out there for the years, have been blessings to my life, have helped me, have shared things. But you know what? They're not pastors. They're not your shepherd. You need a local church and you need a local pastor. And you can't solely feed on Copeland or Hagen. Are you here? Or Copenhagen? <laughs> Amen. You just can't follow a man around. I, I always loved Dad Hagen. You know what? And, and, you know, I, I, he was my spiritual father. But I always liked, you know what I liked about him was? He said, don't take my word for it. He would always say, don't take my word for it. Go study it out for yourself. Don't ever go out and tell and, and try to say, well, Brother Hagen said such and such. That's why it's got to be true. He said it won't work for you because Brother Hagen said it. He always said those things. You got to listen to his tapes and stuff. He'll say that. He said, you've got to get into the Bible and find out for yourself. Then you can say, I believe it because the Bible says it, not because Brother Hagen or Brother Cooper or anybody else said it. I believe it because the Bible said it. You got to find out for yourself. Amen. See, I can follow after somebody like that. Well, Paul says, follow me as... I follow the Lord. Right. Saying the same thing, don't follow me if I'm not following what the Bible says. means you've got to know what the Word says yourself. Right. If he's following the Lord, fine. If he's changed off, you can't keep following. You've got to go with the Word. I said, you've got to go with the Word. I said, you've got to go with the Word. Because you can get deceived. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, and whom the God of this world is blind in the minds of them, or the eyes of them. Amen. See, Satan will try to deceive you through blinding your eyes to the truth. You'll get something that'll tickle your ears. Ministers say stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people who make a lot of statements and don't back up any of it with the word. Amen. And they all sound good. This is your day of, you know, one million time restoration. Could you back that up with the word, please? 
I got a word for you. You're never going to have trouble with the devil as long as you live. In Jesus' name, I got a word for you. Really? The Lord Jesus Christ couldn't even get rid of the devil for the rest of his time on earth. Study your Bible. After the, after the temptation in the wilderness, it said the devil left him for a season. He came back. If he ain't going to leave Jesus, he ain't leaving you. Come on now. We got to make sure we're not making statements, grandiose statements that the Bible doesn't support. I, I, get, them on, I get them on, you know, uh, sometimes I get stuff, people post stuff on Facebook from these, these ministers. and There's one person that, out there and they'll make all these statements, you know. I break every binding spirit and every devil out of your life. And, you know, if I don't break them, you, you're just saying over general over the whole body of Christ ain't going to work. If Jesus could get rid of the whole bunch, he would have when he was here. You can't bind every devil off of everybody in the whole world. It doesn't work that way. They got to get involved. And if, you, and if you do have some authority, it's because you've got a relationship and you're doing it, or they've asked you to, and you get into agreement with them. Pray for me. I, I'm having trouble with the devil. Well, I agree with it, and I take a, can you agree with this? I take authority over every binding spirit, every demonic spirit that's affecting you right now. I bind them in the name of Jesus, command them to loose you in Jesus' name. Can you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. All right, now we're in agreement. And I can't get on the internet and bind every devil on the planet. My God. And it happens all the time. People, oh, yeah, God, 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 that's, that's the word. Uh, based on what? See, we're spirit beings that are led by God. We live out of the word of God. <coughs> You're going to have to do some dealing with the devil. Amen. Man, what, what? I declare that everybody in the world is going to get saved tomorrow morning in Jesus' name. We're all going to heaven the day afterwards. By what authority do I say that? I don't have any authority. Do I have authority to say that? Come on now, think about it. Because if I could do that, everybody would, we'd already be in heaven. Because somebody would have thought that before I did. That it, if it worked, we'd all been there. And tell you what, <clears throat> if that would have worked, Jesus would have got up, come off the cross, came back down, met with the disciples, said, okay guys, here you go. I declare that everybody receives me tomorrow and we're all going to be in the millennium the next day. If Jesus couldn't do it, you can't do it. Say amen, oh me, or ouch! You can't do it. We got to stay with the word. And as spirit beings who are being led by God, we're to live out of the word of God. Don't let <clears throat> what people do in the, in, in the, uh, in the realm of sensationalism which draws a lot of following and a lot of money. Let me just be real honest with you. A lot of this is sensationalism that draws a lot of money and a lot of following. Now, I know Brother Benny, Benny, Brother Benny prays, prays a lot. And I know Brother Benny would have got up already by now and got everybody saved if, if he could have done it that way. Benny, Benny would be a Facebook maniac. You wake up every day and Brother Benny would have, you're declared, you're free, you're bound, you're, you're loose, you're going to heaven, you're saved, you're sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, everybody that sees this is going to heaven. He'd, be, he'd, be, he'd have Facebook accounts on any kind of name you could think of. Wouldn't you, Biddy? Yes, he would. But it don't work that way. So we, the, Satan will try to blind our eyes to the truth. And if he can't keep us out of doing something for God, he'll try to push us into excess. Let's just walk like Jesus. No, Je There's so much to the walking with God out of our spirit we haven't tapped into. I got the healing anointing. I'm going to the hospital and setting everybody free. Really? Jesus walked up to Solomon's porch. Five porches and got one guy healed. Go read your Bible. The whole place was full of people. And he walked by one guy and said, knew he'd been a long time in that state, and said, will you be made whole? The guy said, sir, when the water is troubled, for an angel came down in a certain season, troubled the water, you know, uh, that when the water is troubled, I'll, I'm on my way down there, somebody gets in before me, and I don't get nothing. That wasn't the question. He said, will you be healed? And he got him healed and walked off and left the rest of them there. Why? Because he was walking as a man anointed by God, by the Holy Ghost, and the gifts of the Spirit were manifestation. And he had a, a manifestation of the gift of healing to that one guy and walked off and left him. Left everybody else. Why? 
because you can't operate outside the will and the operation of the Holy Ghost. Hello? Why did he choose that one guy? I don't know. Then it's not God's will to heal everybody. No. We, we, listen. My God. We become so spiritually ignorant. I'm talking about, I'm talking about our circles. We got so caught up with stupid stuff. Trying to live in sin and not serve God. Trying to see if we can drink and get away with it. I remember when I went to Estonia, last time I was in Estonia, about, about nine years ago. I went to some of the pastors and some of the ministers that I had first taught the very first year. They had a Demata Bible school. Mark Brzee started the Demata Bible school over there. His very first one was in Estonia and the other one was in Sweden, same year. Fallen Sweden and, and um, Tallinn, Estonia. And I went to both those schools on that first trip. That very first year they were open. And I'm telling these people were hungry for God. And we preached. <coughs> they would come out from the other, other balconies and tell us to shut the windows. Because I was preaching like a crazy man. The Estonians hadn't seen crazy preachers. <laughs> they walk around like this. Americans, if we smile at if we smile, we, they say, we, we, we make faces. That's what they would say, we make faces. That was their saying about Americans. Because we walk around like this, see, hey, how you doing? They would just go, not even smile. They got turned on to God. They were flowing the gifts of the Spirit. Well, somewhere in there, <clears throat> they got hung up on this drinking wine thing. Last time I went, they were, they were wanting to talk about how they were free to drink wine. And there's no power left in their churches. I'm telling you, I was in the churches. I preached in some of those same guys' churches. No power in them anymore. They got caught up in worldly things and got their eyes off the heavenly things. Being led by the Spirit of meditating on the Word of God. They spent all their time and they were trying to prove that they could do stuff. Instead of spending time in the Word to get closer to God. Let your spirit be consumed with God. We could cry with the psalmist as a, as a deer panteth after the water. So my soul longeth for thee. Oh, glory to God. Jeremiah, my soul longeth for thee. My flesh thirsteth for thee as in a dry and thirsty land. Our spirits ought to be like that. Not can I get away with this. See, we think if we get the world to believe it's okay to drink and come to our churches and drink beer and we're going to go out and drink with them, we're going to have some effect on their life. Yes, you are. A negative one. Because you're trying to use a manly, worldly technique to win their approval. And you know what wins people's approval? Coming with something that delivers them from the clutches of damnation. A spirit man who's alive unto God so that when you speak, it's like they said of Jesus, we've not heard anyone speak like this before. You didn't speak as the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You didn't speak as the religious people. So you're being religious when you're trying to, when you try to water yourself down to the world and be like the world to win the world, you've become religious. Jesus came out of the presence of his father. And when he opened his mouth, the oracles of God. So you're spirit beings. And you're to be in communion. Spirit. I know I'm leaving a lot of scriptures out. I'll get to them. <clears throat> but you are, you're, we are spirit beings. And we're being in communion with the Father of spirits. So that we become the oracles of God and his wisdom and his counsel. The psalmist said, blessed is the man. Go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Bless Psalm 1.1. Not Psalm 11, Psalm 1 1. Blessed is the man <coughs> that walketh not in the counsel, the advice, the way of the ungodly. See, somehow, I don't know why we think it's cool to be like the world when the world is messed up. Come on now. Which, you know, advice means plan, by implication, the plan of the world. <coughs> it 
nor of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way. This was an interesting word. The word way here meant course of life. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel or advice of the ungodly, nor standeth in the manner of life of sinners. That's what it means. That word means in the mode of life, how they operate, how they function. That, that's over here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Y'all here, you go home. Why are we trying to figure out ways to go back and be like the world when God has given us such a mighty, gracious, and precious gift to live like him? Can I get a, can I get a grunt? I got Benny in tongues. Anybody give me a grunt? Why are we trying to live like the world when he gave us the gift that we can live like him? Why do you want to try to get away with as much as you can get away with and make heaven when you can give it all to him and have heaven on earth? So he goes on and says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel or the advice of the ungodly, nor standeth in the mode of life of sinners, nor sitteth in the ski, uh, seat of the scornful or the mockers. People mock Christians all the time now. People don't want to be mocked, so they, they'll, they'll back it off. Well, I'm not like those Christians. I'm not either. I'm like the crazies. I'm all out for Jesus, glory to God. 100%. I'm a Bible-toting, devil-destroying, tongue-talking believer. Hallelujah. Instead of trying to water it down, well, you know, we're not like them. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It is time that we live out of our spirits and stop trying to live out of our flesh and get the we want the results of living out of our spirit but be able to live out of our flesh, and it doesn't work. You cannot live out of your flesh and have everything you do prosper. Can I get at least one holy grunt out there? Can I get somebody to go, see, see, like a pig call? And whoop, there you go. He says, blessed is the man. See, we got people going around saying, I'm blessed no matter what I do. And God said, blessed is the man that does it this way. Blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that doesn't stand in the way of the sinners or in the mode of life of sinners. Blessed is the man that doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. Amen? But what? The man who's blessed, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in God's law does he meditate day and night. Actually, the word law here comes from a Hebrew word that means precepts or statutes. God's precepts, God's statutes. What's that mean? God's got a moral code. Now, as much as people don't believe it, God has a moral code. It's ingrained in man. Paul wrote and said nature itself testifies against people. Testifies of God. There's a code ingrained in our, in our humanity. It's a moral code of God. Hello? Stop trying to break it. Medi you have a delight in the statutes and precepts of God. Anything God tells you not to do won't hurt you. Anything he tells you to do won't hurt you. If you don't, if you, if you refrain from doing what he told you not to do and engage in doing what he told you to do and you meditate in that, you'll be blessed in your deed. As a matter of fact, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What? You'll have a full supply all the time and you'll bear your fruit always in your season. That's what it means to live out of your spirit. Your Constantly drawing, drawing. There's an endless supply of, of, of what that tree needs to function. 
See, tree planted by the rivers of water. That river just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing. And that tree's got its roots in the dirt, the soil near the river, and it's just sucking up all the water it needs. And it doesn't have to have rain. As long as that, as long as that river's flowing, he just keeps sucking it up. <laughs> and then when season time comes, it bears its fruit. Then it keeps right on growing, keeps right on standing. Next season, bears its fruit. Why? God's giving you an analogy. When you're doing it his way, when you're meditating in his word, when you're, not, when you're not walking in the way of sinners, when you're not getting your counsel from the ungodly, when you're not sitting in the seat of mockers, but you're delighting in his statutes and precepts, then you are constantly drawing from the rivers of life and always bearing your fruit when you're supposed to. Glory to God. And I can just tell you that Michelob or that, that Schlitz or that Colt 45 or that Chardonnay or that Champagne or whatever else it is ain't worth any of that stuff. Taste and see that the Lord, he is good. I saw, I saw a movie a number of years ago. Uh, I saw the television version because it was on television. But it's, you know, it's an old movie with uh, Melanie Griffith called The Stranger Among Us. And she got, she, uh, for some reason, I forgot she was a police officer, something had to go and live with the Hasidic Jews. I, I, think it's, I, I can't remember the whole story, but I mean, she had to live with Hasidic Jews in New York. And they were at the table, and they had the kids at the table, and they took um, some type of sugar and put it in the scriptures and had the kids come and lick their finger, honey, and had them lick their finger and come put it on there. And, put it, and, so, and they told them, it's, it's just like that, that is sweet to the taste. The word is sweet to our soul. Taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Tell people that they don't need the things of this world to satisfy their taste. Because the sweetness of the Lord will satisfy you. Amen. The sweetness of the Lord will be a blessing to your life. The sweetness of the Lord. Can I say something else? You're going to have a hard time helping an alcoholic if you're sitting there drinking your beer. You're out, out. They saw you on television or whatever. Then you go out to the local pub. And, and I'm talking about I'm, I'm talking about somebody here in this city. Post it all over Facebook, all over the internet. They're out there with a beer. And you got some guy over there who's got a drinking problem. And you're sitting over there and you're going to minister to him while you drink. There's a reason they call alcohol spirits. You don't believe in drinking? Nope. Just flat out don't. Well, you're just too, you're too bound. No, I'm free. Because I don't have to have that to be satisfied. Amen. 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 I don't even have to have sweet tea. I can go out and drink water. I, I, I do, I'm doing more of that. I can sit down and drink water with lemon in it. Well, do your taste buds want the sweet tea? Sure, but it's not all that good for me to drink it every time I sit down at the meal and drink, you know, because I'll drink a gallon of liquid when I eat. I run the waitress's legs off. And it doesn't matter what, if I'm drinking sweet, sweet tea or water, I run their legs off. You used to put the picture on, they can't do that anymore for health code laws. They won't let you put the pictures on the table anymore. Like, put the picture on the table so you don't have to walk so much. Because I'm going to drink a bunch or drink, bring me three glasses. Hello? When do we decide that God is more than enough to satisfy us versus trying to be like the world and think we're going to win the world. Because you know what? They've already got what they got. And they're pretty stinking doggone miserable with it. So why are you trying to do it and think you're going to help them? Why don't you just go get your joint and go smoke with them? It's legal in Colorado. Now go out to Colorado and witness with your joint. Go out and have your, your bong party at the church. Man, we had a good, good service today, didn't we? It's legal. Don't make it right. Y'all hear you go home. Prostitution is legal in Denmark. Does that mean you can go over there and just have your prostitute? 
Come on now. We're not, we're not to be like the world. We are not the world. We're not of this world. We're different beings. We live out of our spirits. We're to be light and darkness. We're to be a, we're, we're to be a, 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 a light on the candle, a, lit, a light on the hill to give light to people. <coughs> we're not to, de to descend into their sin, to be like them, to help them. You're not going to help them. Why don't you just go be a pimp so you can get your girl saved? See how stupid that sounds? I don't like the way he talks to that church. He's just too plain. Well, I mean, if you're going to go find you some drinking church, you may as well hear all the other stuff too. We're spirit beings. We're to be living out of our spirit. And we're to not, let's look, let me look over here. Um, oh, gosh. One more scripture, okay? I know we're running late. It wasn't my fault. Dick and Nathan couldn't stop. They just kept going. This is the worship service that never ends. They just go on and on. My friend. They started singing it, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it. Oh, I'm sorry. How many remember Lamb Chop's Lamb Chop song? Remember the song that never ends? Hallelujah. I'm getting there. Just hold on to your, your pew. Amen. I got to find it. Oh, gosh, where is it? Three. Okay. Verse 13 of chapter 3. Where who is a wise man and endued with, with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation. That word conversation means lifestyle. Let him show out of a good lifestyle his works with meekness of salvation. But if he have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth, this wisdom descendeth not from above. But is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. Wait a second now. Full of mercy and good fruits. Wait, 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 wait. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in them that make peace. There's a wisdom that's not this earthly, sensual, and devilish. What does it mean? It makes sense to your head. Yeah, I got a new thing. We don't, we're not even going to tell people they're sinners, they're lost. We're just going to have wide open worship service and invite people to come. We're not even, we're just going to tell them God loves them and he, he's okay with however they're living. That makes sense. Why? Because you get numbers. But the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. He on went on and said, this, this kind of peace that, that comes from heaven is sown in the fruits of righteousness. Amen. The people at your jobs don't need to know if you drink beer or drink wine with your meal, and that's going to make them want to come to your church. They need to know, have you got an answer, and have you got an anointing that will deliver them from the bondages they're going through in their life? That their, their son has just been diagnosed with a cancer that's going to kill them. Have you got something that will set him free? And I'm going to tell you something. A little sip of this ain't going to do it. Come on now. Yeah, I've got something. I spend time with God. And I get into the presence of God. And the anointing comes on me. And his anointing is, I'll come lay hands on him. If I can't do that, I'll send a prayer cloth. And it won't be me, but Jesus will show up in that room. And the power of God will deliver him. Not me. But I've got it because I spent time with him and separated myself from the things of the world so I could have that on my life. Balaam went the way of the world to get the money and was even going to curse God's people until the donkey said no. Like, like uh, Don Francisco sign said, you know, um, the angel of the Lord was standing there waiting to to split your head when you and his sword connected. The angel of the Lord was sent to stop him. The donkey fell over and started beating, get up, get up, get up. Why? He wanted, the, he, wanted, he wanted the success of the world so much so he was willing to curse what God had blessed. Wow. 
How do you know God had blessed him? I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. That's pretty much he's blessed them. And they offered Balaam money to go curse what God had blessed. You can be so deceived by the things of the wisdom of this world, you will bring a cursing on what God had called blessed. And you'll bless what he cursed. He was trying to pronounce a curse against God's people, Israel, so that the people they were coming to fight against wouldn't be defeated. In other words, they would have been blessed. So he was going to bless what was cursed and curse what was blessed for the sake of worldly success. And everybody say, whoa. But it's so. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you we're going to live out of our spirits. We're going to live by the power of God. And we're not going to let this way of this world keep us down and keep us entrapped and keep us enamored with the, with the weight and the sin of this world. We're going to go God's way in Jesus' name. Can everybody say amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.